Hi everyone, thank you for joining us at four o'clock. Well, it's four twelve. You know, four o'clock is close enough in our book. Um, we don't live by normal time structures. I'm here today with Thanos Panagides, and Thanos has um, has got the most um, beautiful voice when it comes to talking about speaking out. And he's the founder of Ninety Nine Percent Unite. You may have seen him on the news and in the media around, you know, um, COVID-19, isolation and other such things. And I'm really excited that he's joining me today. Fanos, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Annette. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. It's like pretty random. It's like, yeah, I'll talk to you five <laughs> seconds and now we're best friends. Yeah. So I would like to know, first of all, what's 99% Unite and why is it so specific? With 99%, what does that mean? Because 99% Unite doesn't discriminate to any, towards any one person's action. At the end of the day, whether you're, you know, um, an activist of, you know, uh, 5G or um, vaccines or not trusting the government, at the end of the day, you've got 99% of the world being controlled by 1% of the population and 99% of the population being controlled by 1%. So that's why we're called the 99% Unite, because we are the people uniting against the corporations. Yeah, well, and why is it, like, I know why that's important, but for, for those who are sitting out there going, well, I feel pretty powerless, what can I do? You know, this is the government we've got or this is the structures that we've got. Why is it so powerful to embrace and unite around our uniqueness and our commonalities because at the end of the day we're people right and corporations are corporate entities meaning they are, they are dead entities right we are living flesh and they are just they're basically just information on paper yet they rule the world right and only as a people, when a people actually bands together and sees how strong the flesh and blood of people is and corporations can't exist without people being part of those corporations, then it all falls over. You know what it reminds me of? I don't know, like I know I'm a little bit older than you, but there was a movie many years ago called A Bug's Life. I don't know if you've seen it. And it's about these ants who were controlled by the grasshoppers and, you know, the one little ant stands up and goes, you know, they are few and we are many. Why are we letting these guys walk all over us? It really sounds like, you know, that is what you're talking about is that we are allowing such a small percentage of the world or, or community or society, whatever you want to put us, put it in, to control our decisions and who we can talk to, what we can say, when we can say it. Am I on the right track there? Yeah, look, at the end of the day, I don't have a problem with people making decisions as long as those decisions have the, the public's best interest in mind and not the interest of the corporations, All right? If you have a look at, um, you know, the current standing with people's lives and um, the economy and all the other stuff, right, it's not there to serve the people. It's there to serve the corporations. Now, why do we hear news reports not too long ago saying that the government's finally putting in measures in place to start taxing the corporations in this country? I'm sorry, well, what were you doing all this time? Just letting them get by without paying a bit of tax. Oh, thanks for that. So they've only been trading here for 60, 70 years and you guys haven't been taxing them properly. But you're happy to take 30 cents for a dollar of every single dollar I earn and you can take it with a straight face and then address your Australian public and, you know, uh, act like you've got some type of integrity. Seriously? And you say you're for the people? You're not for the people. You're not for the people at all. Do you, th do you think that the people have become complacent and apathetic and feel like they actually are powerless? Of course. I was one of those people who was complac complacent and apathetic. Right? I saw all this stuff going on and, you know, um, I don't think it was bad enough for people to want to do something about it. But it's reached this point of, you know, uh, critical mass where, you know, people need to actually start doing something 
because all these people that are, you know, creating all these rules, they don't have the interest of the public in mind. They don't have the interest of people in mind at all. It's about lining the corporation's pockets. And that's all it's about. You know, like, look at look at safety cameras, road safety cameras, right? They call speed cameras road safety cameras. So why are they hidden behind signs? Why isn't it advertised that one's coming up so people actually slow down? Because it's not in the, it's not about it's not about safety, it's about revenue. If they're hidden, they're gonna get more people. So I'm not allowed to swear on this show, am I? <laughs> right? Yeah, go for it. Don't bullshit me, tell me that a camera's there in the interest of public safety, but you go and hide it behind a sign, and then you're gonna book people and charge them money for it. That's not in the interest of public safety. If you were in the interest of public safety, you wouldn't be putting cameras on the road. What you'd be doing is you'd be putting um, you'd be putting more police on the road that were stopping people from speeding. Or if we go back even further, when we're 16 and we're going for our learners, they would make available to us defensive and safety driving programs that would educate us on why it's important to go at a certain speed, what happens when you go over a certain speed and educate us. Because it, it often seems to me that we're fined and we're penalised for these right. rules uh, you know, you, I watched a video that you did and you said something about what Abraham Lincoln said about their most important document, that it's so long and complicated that it actually... No, that was Winston makes, Churchill. Winston Churchill, Winston okay. Churchill, the length of this document defends it against being read. Yes. And that's Do what you, we're a victim of. That's exactly what we're a victim of. All of these rules and regulations and everything they put in place, they are, they are, they are created in a language that only a, only a certain few people know how to decipher. And it's, it's created like that for a reason. Because if people, you know, if, if the laws were really in place to protect the interests of the people, one thing they'd actually teach in school is how to read law. One thing they'd actually teach in, in school is how to actually understand and dissect what these people are saying so you know you're not being taken advantage of. Why don't they? Because the laws aren't in the interest of the people. They're in the interest of the people that are controlling the country. Mm. If you really uh, care about the people, you teach the people how to read this stuff in school. It'd be part of our curriculum, wouldn't it, instead of, yeah. like, just algebra, which I don't think I've used since grade eight. You know, like, these are life skills. If we're being imposed by all these laws, shouldn't we know how to read them? Shouldn't we be taught how they work and how they affect us on a daily basis? Why is it nothing that gets spoken about? Mm. And, it, and it, it's, you know, interesting it's, too, it's interesting too when you break those laws. I watched a documentary, I think it was on Netflix last year, about all of the rules in America and, you know, it seems that we, we replicate a lot of what they do and this person said you know the average person in america commits three to four felonies a week because there are so many rules and so many restrictions on being a human being in society that you just can't help it do you think that they have done this so that it does make us make it easy for us to break the law 100 percent. everything everything that's designed these days that's written in the law is written in such a way that you are very easily penalised and you don't really have a leg to stand on unless you understand the language. Like when they say person, person doesn't mean anything. It's a fictitious character. They're basically um, everything that's being enforced on you isn't being enforced on your, your living flesh and blood. It's being enforced on your fictitious character. That's why it says a person in all the law. Mm, I've, I've read a little bit about from civil libertarians, um, libertarians around um, the constitution and the use of person. Uh, is is that what you're referring to? Yeah. So look, at the end of the day, if people really knew about how the law's written and how you're actually, you know, a corporate entity because your name's in capital letters on your birth certificate, and that's done on purpose. And your mortgage and your license and all this other stuff you have is basically one big massive lie, right? 
And half this stuff, you you know, you, you shouldn't even have it because all it does is, you know, uh, put you in a in, put you in a way where you can basically be penalised under your fictitious character. You know, people wouldn't do half the things they're, they're being told to do, and they wouldn't well, need to. We don't know, and and, and like it, well, we it, it really is re ignorance, isn't? It? I remember a. a a senior policy advisor in, in the Queensland government a few years ago, I, I, I lost my licence because I didn't pay a ticket. And I was sitting in the courtroom and the guy who had been charged four times with drink driving walked out of there with a day licence and I lost mine for a month. And I rang the, the transport department and I went, I don't understand. Like I didn't put anyone's life in danger per se yet I'm being punished more harshly. And he went, ignorance of the law is not an excuse. And I remember thinking, have you looked at those laws? Like, I'm pretty smart, but, you know, hey, how am I meant to understand all of this shit? Yeah. Yeah, look, at the end of the day, um, it's almost like I was made to learn security for a reason because when I started training in security, I actually became very involved with looking at the law, right? And it's almost like I was meant to learn what I was meant to learn and before I got to this point. And um, I learned that the way the law is written, every single word in the way it's written on the page is interpreted only in the meaning that it has in the dictionary, right? So person doesn't mean human being. It doesn't mean flesh and blood. Right, reasonable doesn't mean you know. Oh, it, you know, it would be seen as okay. It, it actually means something in the law. Every single word that's written is written with the meaning that backs that that word. And that's what people don't understand when they look at a section in the law. Right, it's it's written in such a way that unless you understand how those words are interpreted through the meaning that's backed in the dictionary or the law, you know, the laws that the 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 law dictionary that they go back to, then, you know, they think they're reading one thing, but they're not. They're reading something completely different. And when, so, I, looked at, when I looked at a section of, uh, of the law talking about the powers to arrest and the, the powers that people would have to arrest, and it was, you know, really basic, like the way it was written, you could fly a jumbo jet through it with the powers that they had to arrest someone. I'm it's like, pretty ambiguous, that's not, isn't it? That's not specific, you know. Or the um, emergency powers that people have uh, to to uh, reduce a public health risk. That's that's a statement so wide you could fly a jumbo jet through it and attach anything in the interest of public safety that someone could be arrested for, or dragged out of their house for, or put in prison for. You know, and people are letting these things you know just go because no one knows any better. So how do we educate ourselves? And, and let me go back just a little bit because one of the challenges that we have with social media and with, you know, like that video you said to people, you, and I'm a big believer in this, you know, like these things that we hold in our hands while we're awake, our phones, this is the media. We are the media. But for those who are sitting there listening to you, and I know there's people out there going, oh, my God, listen to this guy rolling their eyes and going, just another one going, listen to me, yeah. How do you get that message across to people who think that civil libertarians and libertarians are whack jobs or nutters or conspiracy theorists? Uh, it, it, Is that what I am, a civil libertarian? <laughs> Is that what I get classed as now? Oh, uh, well, well, I... I no, that's what I went, like I've spoken oh. to many people like you, um, really interested in, um, you know, the Constitution and, and, and the, you know, I've looked at, you know, the, the definition of, of people and person and I know that you're a libertarian, that you're looking at how do we help the people have an element of freedom and opportunity to live their life without being restricted by corporation and by law. So it's a, I, I would say it's a compliment. But I do know there are people out there who are so constricted by, you know, like I was reading, 
I've read today that Scott Morrison's approval rating has gone up to 72% because in the space of five months, he's gone from being a complete nut of pillock to being, you know, one of our greatest prime ministers that we've had. How quickly do people forget? Approval ratings. Has, yeah, no, I, I know that. Really approval ratings and all this stuff because how do I know he was actually approved by people? How do we actually know what we're being told of his approval, approval ratings are actually true? I know. Because no, did anyone ask you? Right. Were you asked about Sorry? Scott Morrison? You Were you saying, well, what do you think? Like, I don't know who are these people that they're being asked. And quite often those approval ratings are such a small portion of society that it's really easy to slant them in a direction that you want them to go. You know, what do they say? 99% of statistics are all made up, you know, and I just made that bit up. <laughs> yeah, look, at, at the end of the day, when I hear, oh, they've got a 98%, a 70% approval rating and all this other stuff, really, I'm going to believe there's something that, that, that the media tells me and the government tells me right now. Isn't that a bit of a con conflict of interest? So the uh, the people that are, that are announcing the approval rating is the same organisation that's trying to input the rules in the first place. That's like Kmart turning around saying, oh, we did an independent study and we found that our products are safe. <laughs> it's and like, we what? It. What? That doesn't make sense. That's a conflict of interest. If Absolutely. there's going to be that type of thing, it should be done by a non-related source, not the government. That doesn't make sense to me. Not that at all. That your organisation is saying that you've been approved. Oh, really? And I'm going to believe that, am I? Because you told me. Oh, let's go about our business and the government says everything's all right and they've been approved. Really? I'm going to believe that. No, no way. It, it creates a false sense of security for people. But if I go back to that question, how, how, do, how, do, you get, how do you get people to, to question more? Is it like where, where do we start to do that? And how do we do that? Because when we blindly just go along with the status quo, we become like those ants in that community in a bug's life. It's like, it's okay, please bend me over a log and take advantage of me and I will give you my income every week and I will believe everything that you say. Look, at the end of the day, I say to people, stop listening to the media, stop reading what you read, and listen to what your gut's telling you. And if you feel something's not right, your intuition's telling you something that is not right, it doesn't matter what you're being told and what you're hearing. Listen to your feeling. Because there's a lot of people out there that are rolling their eyes at me, what I'm saying, but deep down inside, they can feel that they can feel that there's something seriously wrong. They're just too scared to speak about it. Because they don't want to be seen as a person who's uh, going against the grain, even though they believe it with every, every you know, ounce of their being, you know. Mm. So at the end of the day, it's, I don't believe, I don't really think it's about um, questioning what's being said. I think it's about feeling, what's my intuition telling me? Is my intuition telling me something's right right now or something's seriously off? Well, if it's seriously off, go with that and start researching that. Because you will find your answer. Because at the end of the day, stop looking for the person, stop looking for your the, the figure of um, or the personality to look forward to in order to find your salvation in all of this information right now because the people that control all the information are controlling the narrative. So you're not going to find your reliable sources. You're not going to find government accredited, so accredited sources. You're not going to find val uh, valid information in terms of being um, an organisation that's been backed by the government if the government's the one who's controlling the narrative that's screwing everyone over at the moment. You it just becomes propaganda, doesn't it? Yeah, you have to allow yourself to be freed from all that. And if you don't think your government can lie, your government's been lying to you for, for years. Since 1970, they've been a, you know, 1976 or whatever, they've been a de facto government. Right, they're not even a real government. They, they they got rid of the Commonwealth. They they changed the constitution. They're under, under a completely different constitution, right? All of these things they're doing, and people are saying, "Oh, well, we can trust our government." You can't trust your government. Your government's been lying to you for years. You only need to look at the fact that there's a there's a cotton mill 
that's dri- completely taken all the water out of the Darling River Basin. One example of a complete injustice to Australian people that was allowed to happen and still allowed to operate and hasn't even been questioned. They haven't even done anything about it. And I, I, don't, need any, I don't need any more proof than that to see the, the government is full of lying, lying scumbags that have no actual care and compassion for the people whatsoever. And they want to sit there and go, oh, we gave you guys money. Great, you gave us money. So you gave me back my 30 cents to a dollar that I gave you the whole time the country was running great. Thank you very much. Oh, you gave me access to my super. Thanks. So you gave me access to my money that I've been putting in there anyway. So what did you really give me? Nothing. You put the country in debt is all you did. Do you think that there are any good politicians? Do you think there's anyone in government that's there for the right reasons? If there were, they'd been sacked because it's not about being for the people. It's about controlling the narrative and making sure that, um, you know, the controlling interest that gets to run the show, uh, you know, gets to keep moving forward. So do I believe there's good politicians at the moment? I haven't seen one because I haven't seen anyone speak up against all this stuff. It makes me think about what happened to Peter Garrett when he went into politics, how quickly they hung him out to dry when things didn't go right. And I and often and I hope and I pray that not that I'm a praying person, but anyway, um, that he was behind the scenes going, nee, 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 and they just went, We need to shut you up and get rid of you. Well, people are saying people have been saying for me to get into politics, right? And I'm like do I honestly want to be associated with that word? Do I honestly want to be associated with those people and all they've ever done in all this time have done things that just lines their pockets? Where's so, everything been done in the interest of the people? Fanos, tell me, how does a regular old human being like you and I and the people listening to us having this conversation right now, how do we affect change? How do we make these people listen to us? These are the people that have been voted by us to be our spokespeople but have got their earphones on and their blinkers on and are not listening. What do we need to do to get cut through to make them hear us? You need 5% of the population to band together. You need 5% of the population to stand up and say we've had enough of all this. And how do we do that? What does that look like? You said in your video the other day, write letters. Yeah. Right, send letters in. I'm in the process right now of getting letters set up on my website, on the 90, I won't say my, on our 99% website, right? I've got a tab that says take action so people can download letters. That'll be up by Friday. Oh, awesome. So templates that people can go, this is the, 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 the area that the I feel really passionate. Awesome. Brilliant. Go and click on the letter. Go, go to Officeworks. You can print it out straight off your, off your email or whatever else. Um, you can download the letter. Um, go straight to Officeworks, print it up, put in a registered envelope and send it off. Hmm. It's, it's like Pat's just said, have the courage of your conviction because – you know, if there's one thing I know about human beings, we're really quick to have a whinge about when things aren't right, but we're not so quick to actually take action and, and make things change. And and you certainly are a man of conviction and a, a man of passion, um, which is real, it's kind of really exciting to sit here and have a chat to you. It, what else? So you said in this video, like, pick up your phone. This is your media. How can people use social media to get their message out there? Imagine a million people a day got on and did videos how they're feeling they're being deceived by the government. Imagine a million videos a day are being uploaded to social media saying how people don't trust their government at the moment. Everywhere people would look, listen, the way the media works is just suggestive programming. And every single channel does the same shit suggestive programming. So take it back. Do that on social media where every single day People upload videos showing how they don't trust the government. But it's them speaking. It's them out crying for, for some type of change. 
And we I can make a difference. When you, when you look at what's happening in the US at the moment and there's, you know, people taking to the streets and protesting and and that the police are shooting them with rubber bullets. That, I mean, they're shooting the media as well. It, do you think that, that that's the way our country is going to go, is that, you know, if we do continue to speak too loudly, that they will shut us up? Well, look, at the end of the day, this is meant to be about a virus, right? This is all this is meant to be about. Isn't this thing going to be gone in six months? It's a virus, right? So why are all these rules about security and getting people's details and tracking people? It's a virus. So what are we going to do the next time a virus comes through? Are we going to, are we going to lock ourselves in our homes again? Are we going to get more injections? Are we going to get more vaccines? Are we going to get more control from the government? And that's going to stop the virus. Is that going to stop the virus? The virus is still going to go. You know, well, my, everything my question is do. what happens next year when it comes back? Yeah. They've seen how people are going to have reacted to this. They've already, we've already shown our hand at how the, the, the people are going to react in the face of fear. That's all this is. It's fear. No. I've spoken to so many people, hundreds of people around the world. Everyone's telling the same thing. Hospitals are empty. We're going into emergency rooms. There's no one there. My dad died of a heart attack. They're saying it was COVID. My grandfather had, um, you know, died of diabetes. They said it was COVID. What? You're, all the stuff that, that I'm hearing around the world, it's the same story. Hospitals are getting paid to list the, the death of something. Why? Why are they being paid to do that for a virus? What are you trying to control exactly? What, what's your theory? What do you think that they're trying to do? What's my theory regarding? So the, we've, we've been forced into isolation. You know, our economy, businesses have just taken the most massive hit. We've got people committing suicide because their lives have just been ruined. Why? Why did they do that? Total control. This is all about control. Everything they're doing reeks of control of the people, and that's it. Thermal imaging, cameras, 1.5 metres apart, facial recognition software. Why? Because I've got a virus? You said that this thing's not deadly in 85% of cases. Why are you treating 100% of the population like they've got a virus that's 100% life-threatening? Why are you doing that? You're just you're showing that your narrative is not about the interests of public safety and it's about the control of the people. And that's what you're doing by showing us all these things, creating all these rules, implementing all these changes. And implementing them all at the same time. Really, you have, like you guys just all of a sudden you just created all these laws. You didn't have all these things ready to go and we're just waiting for the right moment to, to set it all off, to put it into action. You know, does 1.5 metres really stop a virus? No. If someone sneezes, it travels 6.5 metres. So what's 1.5 metres going to do? Nothing. Absolutely Nothing. But what one and a half metres does do, if you're using facial recognition software, is it stops the facial recognition software from working properly. That's so if quite we're, too, we're too close together, they can't differentiate. No, the artificial intelligence can't do its job. The fighting right. against the 5G towers going up because they know that if they want to implement control of the people and they want full control and everyone being monitored, they can't do it on a 4G network doesn't have the wireless capability. That's why the telcos are being supported so much, which implementing this technology. That's why Facebook's censoring anything to do with 5G at the moment. What does a social media platform really care about a technology being implemented by a telco? Mm, well, it was interesting. There's uh, Facebook employees came out today on Twitter saying how concerned they are by Mark Zuckerberg's um, stance on so many things related to what's been going on. But, Fennels, it, it, 
like it, it confounds me as a as a human being who's open minded and believes in opportunity and hope and and the goodness of people. Like I don't understand what it is besides control. What is the long term outcome of doing this? They end up with the people who are devoid of hope and expectation to just have sheep. Like what type of world is that? Why would you want to rule that? It's a one world government coming. People can't even see it. All the stuff that the UN's talking about at the moment, we need to band together globally to deal with this virus. I'm sorry, we need to create a world organisation to stop a virus that's killed 103 people in a country with 25 million over 18 weeks. Really? We need to band together to stop it. Didn't more people die of the flu last year? So why does this thing get so much precedent? Why is the media pushing all this narrative, right? Why is the government and the media in bed together? How come the media is very unbiased towards all this stuff? All of the peaceful protests. Media showed no peaceful parts of all of the people that were getting involved with these protests peacefully. They were happy to show what the police were doing, but not what the people were doing. Mm. Why? Oh. Because they're pushing the narrative. The media oh, really does. The media is not there to inform. The media is to push the agenda. There are a bunch oh. of script. There's there are a bunch of script readers. I saw the vision of you being arrested at the um, protest in Melbourne a couple of weeks yeah. ago. Yeah. And I was quite horrified because you were just standing there speaking and that cop came up in your face and pretty much grabbed you around the head. And, like, I looked at it and went, he, he wasn't being aggressive, he wasn't being violent, he was no. just standing there speaking his truth. And you know, telling everyone to be calm and respect yeah. the job. So I got, he, I got taken because... I was telling everyone to be calm and respect the police's job, really. So we've got it. We've got to wrap up. We've gone. I'm sure we could we could speak for a long time on this. So it, it, to sum up, we want people to ask more questions, don't we? Don't just accept. And and it's not you know it's really easy to roll our eyes and go, oh my god, another conspiracy theorist or. Here's another nut job called like for this, that if there's enough people out there saying, you know what, ask some questions, dig a bit deeper, make make them accountable. That's what we're saying, isn't it? Make them accountable, force them to engage with us because they're legally bound to respond to our letters, aren't they? Well, of course. Look, at the end of the day, people can turn around and say, all these things, but up until, you know, March, no one even knew about me. So it's not like I've been, you know, speaking about out about all this stuff for years, right? It's not like I've been trying to, you know, push people to think about this stuff for years. I've believed it and I've looked into stuff and I've done a lot of research, right? But I put my whole job on the line for this, Right? I have no, I have nothing to gain from doing any of this. The politicians and the media and all the corporations, they have everything to gain from doing this. And one of the only ways we have any type of power is to realise how powerful the pen is and realise how powerful the laws are and whether these scumbags want to admit it or not, they have to follow the law. If they don't follow them, they set the precedent that no one has to follow them. Yeah, it's so no, true. Both Right? You can't say, oh, these are our laws, but we're not going to follow them. I'm sorry. I don't care what position of government you're in. You're bound by your own laws because you're a person as well. So you can't say, oh, it's what's good for the goose. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. It's got to be both ways. You can't it just. It has to, has to go both ways. Yeah. Look, I. Look, I've said I'm not an expert by any means, right? And I've never claimed to be. But I know when something's not right, and I know when I'm willing to, I'm willing to put myself on the line in the name of integrity and honesty, which none of these politicians have done. If anything, they were happy to take they were happy to take pay rises, right? They're very good at avoiding questions. 
I've noticed. You ask them a question and then you're like going, I don't think that you answered that. No. No, most definitely not. So, look, at the end of the day, people have to understand how powerful the pen is. And they have to understand how powerful knowing the law is. That's why they don't teach it in school. Keep people ignorant. The length of this document defends it against being read. They know exactly what they're doing by putting the laws together the way they do and not teaching the people how to read them. Don't you see that as treasonous in itself? Create rules and regulations <coughs> and laws, but the only one who knows how to read them are the people that are enforcing them and not the people that they're affecting? Really? Mm. And, and the people that are impacted... Well. The people impacted by those laws, us, can't afford to yeah. hire legal representation. And how many people have just let things slide because they can't get representation because they can't afford it? it to me, that's always reeked of complicity and and isolation that's, that squish these people down. Yeah, look, if, if you're honest and transparent about the good of the people, the people should know how to read those things. The people should know how to read the very laws that they're being imposed by. That doesn't make any sense at all. You know, that's like someone setting rules in German and you're Italian and they're telling you the rules they have to, you have to follow in German but you don't understand what those rules mean. And then you're being penalised for not following the rules that were in German because all you can hear is Italian. What? Yeah. Well, makes that, no sense whatsoever. That's cracked. That's you know what we need, Fanox? We need somebody out there who is prepared and willing to go through these rules and interpret them into plain English and do a whole series through social media so we can tune in and go, you know, I need to understand why this has happened to me and and, and open it up so we're more empowered and we know where we stand and we know, we, you know, like I always made me wonder, like, how do you know the right questions to ask if you don't know the big scope of things? Look, I've always, had a, saying, I've always had a saying that said a person only looks to better themselves when there is a lack thereof, right? Now, that's exactly in terms of people understanding the law. People are lazy and complacent and there was no need to know the law before, right? But now people have no choice but to learn this stuff because they're being screwed five ways from Sunday with this stuff and they're not even sure what they're doing is lawful. You know, any law written after 1976 or whatever it was what before when they did the referendum and they, they weren't approved to become a republic, whatever they were doing back then, Every law written under that, under that, after that time, under the Queen of Australia, is basically bullshit. It has no legal standing because it hasn't gone through royal assent. Yet they're so, imposing all these laws that actually have no legal standing. But as Winston Churchill said, the length of this document defends it against being read, and no one knows where to start reading, and how far into a document they need to read. Certainly and not then, something you pick up at night time and go, oh, I'm just going to delve into the Australian Constitution here and work out where I stand. Yeah, no. And there's a reason why the Australian people aren't taught how to understand how laws get, get put together. Because so, it's not about the good of the people. It's about the people at the top controlling people in a language that no one else understands. It's protect, protecting a position, isn't it? That's At the end of the day, it comes down to how does the 1% protect what they've got so the rest of us continue to feed into it and they can live their life of power and luxury and whatever that is. So for, for those of you who are listening in, you can go to, um, I've put the link into 99% Unite into the comments box. Thanos, how else can people interact and, and communicate with you if they want to get a little bit more insight into the difference that they can make and the questions that they can ask and push for change? Um, you can head over to the 99% Unite uh, website, which is uh, 99unite.org. Um, so HTTPS double forward slash uh, colon, I think it is, 
um, 99percentunite.org, okay? Um, there is a full social media platform on there where people can communicate without, you know, being censored for ridiculous stuff, right? Just don't be racist and all the other stuff because it's not going to stand anywhere. Um, you know, if anyone would like to, you know, really contribute towards what I'm doing at the moment, now, I'm double, so, you know, any donations towards what I'm trying to do right now would be absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, head over to the 99% Unite uh, Facebook page. Um, have a good look around there. Um, you can message me on um, Facebook. I'm getting heaps and heaps of messages. So um, be patient. Yeah, we'll be put patient. all of the links in the comments so everyone can um, go and find it after this interview. You can go back and have a look. I encourage you, Fanos, um, you know, if you haven't joined our page yet, to come back and answer any questions. There's some great comments there. You've certainly got a lot of support. I'm so appreciative of your, your time, Fanos. Thank you for joining us and um, keep up the good fight. Thank you so much, Annette. It was awesome to speak to you too.